The people who are out there teaching others how to run a credit repair business never had a successful credit repair business of their own. Who are you learning from? Are you learning from someone who day in and day out runs still a successful credit repair business? Or are you learning from someone who tried to run a credit repair business, failed, and now are trying to teach others how to run their own? Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Credit Junkies podcast. I'm very excited for today's episode because I got my good friend, Dustin Ball from Rocket Financial Services here. Welcome, Dustin. And thanks, bro. Thanks for having me on. I was excited when you uh, when you started talking about doing a podcast to help out other folks and just kind of give some perspective to a lot of the people that are that are thinking about coming into it or they're, they're into it. They want to make sure that there's really light at the end of the tunnel and there's success at the end of the tunnel. So I appreciate you, uh, you having me on. Awesome, man. I mean, I've been looking forward to, to our interview for for a while now. I know it's going to be a great conversation that we're going to have here. So let's jump right in, brother. Tell me a little bit. How long have you been in the credit repair industry? When, how long did you decide I'm going to do credit repair and start it? I started helping people. I was actually my first client. I actually started, uh, I had to learn how to do credit repair on my own because my credit was so bad. I couldn't afford to have anybody else help me back in like 2010, right? And um, so I was kind of helping folks out and just just total side gig, not taking any money, friends, friends of family, you know, that sort of thing that just needed some help. Mm-hmm. And I was able to kind of slow drip a kind of my own education, you know, learn a little bit here and there, implementing, learning a little bit more. And um, it was in August 31st of, no, something like that, like the last day of August in 2020, I um, it was smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. I was working as a, at the time I was, I was full-time recruiting surgeons for hospitals, right? That was my job. And I'm sure you remember at the time in, in smack in the middle of COVID, no one was doing any kind of elective surgeries. Basically all surgeries that weren't emergency surgeries had been pushed to the side. And we had uh, like heart surgeons in the ER, uh, like running vents, like running ventilators because you know, that, that was all that was going on. They weren't allowed to do anything else. And so I figured, you know what? I've got a lot of free time, right? No one's hiring surgeons right now. No one needs one. No surgeon is moving because they all want their jobs really bad. And so I was like, well, I've got some free time. I, you know, I might as well start, uh, start, you know, make this legitimate, right? Um, and that's the first time I really kind of started thinking like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I had been thinking about it for a while. I was following um, a couple credit repair people on social media, like Irene Day. Um, you know, Irene, I, I followed her on Twitter for like two years before I started my company and I learned a lot wow. um, just just from following her on Twitter. So I, I started the company, right? And that was on like August 31st. On September 6th, it was, I believe it was a Tuesday after Memorial Day. Um, I came back, my, my supervisor had found out that I had started a company because I'd started doing like videos and things like that. Yeah. And they fired me. Wow. But, yeah. And so, <laughs> I, I mean, and it was like, hey, it's a it's a handbook, employee handbook violation to to seek secondary employment, which I mean, was total BS because like this one guy over here, like he's a DJ on the side and, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> but it was it was just a bad, a bad time in the industry. And so I had to sit there. Um, I think I've told you the story. I had to sit there and wait for Allie, who my girlfriend at the time, we're now married. I had to sit there and go, okay, you know, I've got to tell her that I lost my job. And I sat there and I sat there, I was at her, her apartment, um, sitting there like waiting for her. And um, I had just started the company and I, my only two choices really were either go and try to find another job doing what I do, which was which is recruit surgeons in a down market where no one's hiring surgeons. Pandemic, right. right? Um, or I could two weeks, maybe three weeks, kind of give this a push, give credit repair a push and see what I can do. I see what I can make shake. And like, I give this advice to people and it's bad advice, right? It's truly bad advice, but I always let them know. I say like, hey, if you want to succeed, like quit your job, yep. quit your job, right? And I don't actually recommend that for anybody, but it goes to the mentality because I did everything the legal way, right? So I bought the, like I bought the CRC masterclass, you know, which gave me six months mu- and I got it because it gave me six months of software. So I didn't have to worry about it. Uh, did the LLC, got all my licenses, got my bonds and things like that. And and I spent a chunk doing that. Like you can, you got to, you know, to do it right, you can really spend a chunk. And I'm thankful that I did it because had I not done that, um, I had like, man, six weeks of bills, yeah, uh, like six weeks of bill money left. 
right? It wasn't the wisest decision. It was, you know, it was, I mean, I'm, I'm working a commission job. And so, you know, it was six weeks of, of bills left after that. And had I not done that, had I not, you know, just ponied up all before I got fired, I wouldn't have done it afterwards. Yeah. Right. I would have, I would have been in like, you know, you know, save everything mode. And, and that's what I did. And it worked out so well because I didn't have to worry about things like, you know, like overhead, all, you know, the $180 for credit repair cloud every month, that kind of stuff. I didn't have to worry about it. I, it was already paid for. By the end of that first month, I had, I think like 28 clients. And I was like, Ooh. you know, cause I was, I was working hard, bro. Like I was, um, I had a, I had an office at the house, man. I was with a, with my iPhone, it's like recording videos. I, I didn't know anything about video editing, anything yeah. like that. So I was having to record every video like four or five times to because I was trying to do it like in one take. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't know that you could like edit out chunks, you know. And so I started putting out videos. Uh, and this this informed my thinking about marketing even now because I was just putting out videos talking about credit. Right, yeah. talking about credit in different situations, why single moms need to have great credit, what collection companies don't want you to know, like uh, what violations they like to commit when they're on the phone, those sort of things. Mm -hmm. I just started putting out information that I thought might help people and people started calling. And a lot of that informs the way that I market today because, and, and I've got, I mean, you know, we've done a million dollars and I've never run a dime in ads. I right. never run a diamond ad, right? And I also don't do, um, there's a lot of folks out there that they can make a million dollars doing nothing but referrals. Like I don't do that either. I don't pay referrals. I don't do that. I get all of mine, all, all my clients come in because I put out good information trying to help them out and people respond to that. Yeah. I, um, I give them the value up front, you know, and several thousand clients later, you know, um, a, a current roster of several, several hundred clients, um, they, and they all come in the same way. Like it's informed my idea of marketing. But in the beginning, man, I was, I was putting out like two videos a day. Yeah. There would be times when I would wake up in the morning and I would pull like four or five dress shirts into the office. Yeah. So, cause I, so I could make a video, uh, change shirts, make, make another video, change shirts, you know, and I could try to kind of, yeah, I could try to, uh, <laughs> kind of front load them throughout the week yeah. because I started getting busy. You know, you get 20, 30 clients, you, you start getting kind of busy. Two and a half years, September 6th is when I got fired in 2020. That's so awesome. right at two and Congratulations on like getting fired. Yeah, thank God. Thank goodness. Thank, you That's know, it that's never happened. And man, my uh, my wife now, my, she was my girlfriend then, like she was just like, no problem. Right, That you know, and that kind of took a lot of pressure off me because she was like, hey, you're, whatever you do, you're gonna do great. Mm -hmm. um, but it also kind of gave me that push as in like, Hey, you know, you gotta, now you gotta make sure you, you do, you do it right. Yeah. Right. Um, cause now you got this person that believes in you and you don't want to let down and, uh, it would have been fine if I let her down, but I, I, I wasn't going to do that. It changes everything, right? It changes your perspective yeah. on when you have like a, a support system, it really changes things. When People, like there's a guy, another CRO named Cedric, I know. Um, and last year he was, he was saying something, he, he made a post about, how uh, he got to stay away from women for a while because um, because it's distracting, right? And I was like, man, not the right one, right? Like you find you find the right one, and it's motivating and it's life giving, <laughs> and 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 I'm not saying like, hey, you know, you want to succeed a business, go get married. I'm just saying that like, there's a lot of things came into play in my life mm -hmm. that some of it is due to just my stubborn, you know, stubborn refusal to fail, and a lot of it's because you know, people were around me at the right time, you know, God put the right people around me. Um, and it allowed me to just kind of live into, you know, what I had always hoped. Yeah. I, um, and I couldn't have done it. Like there were, there were times when I was, it took me like four and a half months. I got to a hundred clients. So at that point I'm making, you know, 10 grand plus a month. I'm the only, I'm my only employee, Yeah. but you know, there would be times when Allie would, she'd come by and I just got stacks of letters there and she would just start stuffing stuff into envelopes and stamping and addressing and, yeah. You find the right person, you find the right life partner, whatever, and it becomes a very motivating, uh, a very motivating thing. Yeah, they, there's a saying right behind every um, successful man is a great woman. And my story is very similar too. I mean, before I met my wife, I was making good money, but I never saw it. <laughs> it's like it went out faster than it came in. And when I met my wife, she really helped me kind of put things in place that needed to be in place in order to be successful. 
right? And we, I walked backwards before I walked forwards. I remember we were married for maybe two, three months after we were married. And I remember sitting in our little one bedroom apartment on our couch, considering bankruptcy, right? And like, this is, you know, my story is I ran a very successful credit repair business. I yep. sold that business and it was my lack of responsibility made me lose it all to the point where a few years after selling my business, I'm considering bankruptcy. It's like, how do you do that? Right? So because it, I was just- so you do it real easy. If you're a young stupid kid, not, I was like, I got all this money. Oh my God, I don't have any money anymore. Right? And not, it was like- watching. It helped me appreciate like hitting ground, like hitting like the like the low ground level after having so much success was really awakening, right? And I was never able to climb out of that hole on my own. Like it, I, it took my wife to help me climb out of that hole where we're sitting, you know, literally, all right, well, next month is the month that we're going to go see the attorney and I'm going to file bankruptcy and we'll have our first start in seven years, right? Like this is a successful business owner who ran a credit repair company with thousands of active clients having this conversation. It's like, wow, like it wasn't really like I owe all my success to God, number one, but to my wife, number two. Because sure. if it wasn't for her, who knows where we would have been today. And yeah, like the the letters stacked up and, you know, folding paper and stuff in envelopes yeah. at two in the morning. Like those are, those are the beginnings of what we built that we have today. Right. right? And it's just uh, yeah. a completely different structure when you have that support system. And for, if you're listening, like it may not be a wife or a significant other, but it's important to have the right people around you. If you're surrounded by the right like-minded people, you'll be okay. Right. You're not okay when you're trying to do it all on your own and you're all that you're relying on because you have no accountability. We suck at holding ourselves accountable. You're always going to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Right? You're always going to paint your your actions, your behaviors, your decisions in a better light than probably someone on the outside would. Yeah. You know? and, and like you said, it doesn't have to be a significant other, but as, as an individual, mm -hmm. your motivation is going to go like this. Yeah. Right. Um, there's going to be times when you're super motivated. There's going to be times when not. Um, having other people that you have kind of explained your vision to, they care about you um, and that are invested in that vision with you um, will help keep you going like this, even when your motivation is doing this. Right. Because that's that that's the, that's one of the keys to success is being able to outwork your motivation. Right. Being able to outwork your motivation is key to success. Like you, your motivation is going to go like this. Being able to continue to continue to to dial in. Yeah. And, and be there even when you don't want to be there uh, and put in the work because you know, like, hey, that's what, you know, that's what entrepreneurship is about. Yeah. Right? Imperfect uh, action, right? It's what you were talking about. Like you took imperfect action and you got it done. Recording those videos and trying to re-record them and trying to get it all the way. Like it, you, you made no excuses. You took imperfect action and look where it got you. Right. I, you well, get it over time. You, you don't action. get perfect the first time. Consistent, imperfect action. Consistent, imperfect action. That's right? all it that's takes. And that's what it takes to succeed in, in any business, not only in our industry, especially because it's, you know, consistency is the key to success. You try something, you do something long enough, it'll, it'll give enough time for it to work. You know, right. you just got to do it long enough in order to right. give it time to work. You know, you were in the, you know, you, you decided to, to finally do this when you got, you know, kicked in the butt from your job. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, you got, you had your back pushed against the wall. And you had the support of your amazing girlfriend at the time, wife now, Allie. And then you got in there, right? So how did you, at that time, that defining moment, right? When you decided to start a credit repair business, why did you decide to do credit repair, right? You could have started a staffing agency because you were recruiting people. You could have, you know, started, like play around like a mobile car wash business or something. You could have done, you could have done anything. Why a credit repair business? Why did you land on that? A lot of reasons. One, because it was something that I, I had already kind of, invested in learning how to do, right? I had to do it on myself. I had to do it on on family members and um, uh, some friends. So I was already familiar with it. The barrier of entry is relatively low. Right? Mm -hmm. to be, and, and that's just to be to be real honest, right? Like yeah. the barrier of entry is really low. Like you don't have to, um, there's no specific degree you have to have. All you have to kind of be is, is a little bit of a nerd and be able to digest information. Yeah. Like you can do that and you can apply it. Um, this is something that you can definitely do and again, like it wasn't going to be a business. It was just going to be a side hustle, right? I was like, hey, I've got some free time, but if I'm taking money for it, which that, that was the goal, it's like, if I'm going to take some money for it, um, I listen, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not asking for any problems with the IRS, with yeah. the government, any of that. So I might as well go ahead and make it legal, right? I never intended for it to become a million dollar company. Right? Yeah. I never intended it to, you know, to sit here and look at, oh, 775 clients this morning, right? Like, I never intended anything like that to happen. 
Um, so it was something that I was familiar with. And, and then like, just to be quite frank, right, when you start thinking about it, you start seeing and you start like Googling credit repair and, and starting a credit repair company, what pops up, right? Immediately starting in your feed for the next year and a half, <laughs> it's going to be, you know, um, a lot of the credit repair softwares and things like that. And the truth is, is that, you know, I, I walked on webinars, kind of looked at it and I'm like, okay, I know it's going to be harder than this, yeah. but, but I do believe this is something that I can do, mm -hmm. right? And so- when it happened, I was like, hell, I might as well lean in now, you know? And, um, but there was a lot that I did not know in the beginning that I had to learn. And there's a lot that you don't know that you don't know, yeah. right? Um, like clients aren't just falling out of trees and, you know, no matter what anyone tells you, you're not just going to be bumping into people on the corner that are asking you about your credit repair t-shirt and can you help them out? Your that's car magnets aren't going to work. Yeah, that's, not, that's just not happening. Live in yeah. LA. <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah, that's not happening at all. Uh, you know, so there's a lot that there's a lot that I didn't know. There's a lot that I've had to learn. But that's that's the other key is being willing to say, hey, there's a ton that I don't know. Mm -hmm. right? There's a ton that I don't know. Let's try this out. Let's try this one thing out. Let's this marketing technique or, or whatever. Um, and and keep going. And even if it doesn't even if it doesn't work, OK, does it not work because this method doesn't work? Because if this yeah. method is working for a ton of other people, and it's not working for me. I'm the problem. <laughs> right. Uh, so can I tweak it somehow? Can I, um, or, it, you know, if I, I'm not good at doing this one type of thing, is there a way that I can, is there a way that I can utilize this medium, change it so that the things that are kind of holding me back now aren't going to hold me back later? Yeah. Right. Um, and, and can I use this medium in a way that is different and unique that allows me to, to not, you know, to, to capitalize on it, but not necessarily have like my weaknesses show through? That right. Um, folks don't do that. You know, I talk a lot about this, it, like with, with people that I'm talking to and cause I do a lot of social media stuff, right. Um, TikTok videos, Facebook, that kind of thing. They can try the exact same thing and it doesn't work. Right. Well, okay. Well, one, I always tell people like, Hey, if you copy my stuff, if it's out there, copy it. Like I'll give it to you, take it. And, and if it works for you, awesome. It brings value to your audience. Great. Right. Um, but if it doesn't work, how can you tweak it? Oh, yeah. Right. And they just want to say, oh, well, TikTok doesn't work. Why? Or, or YouTube doesn't work. Social media doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I can promise you that that's not true. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, but, but ads also work. Right. Um, all kind of like um, referrals and affiliate partners and things like that. That also works. All of it works. You've got to, you just have to be willing to find what works with you and, and, and until the wheels fall off. Yeah. Right. And then once it starts kind of that, tweak it, figure out how you can tweak it. Right. Um, an entrepreneur is nothing if not a problem solver, right? I mean, truly, I mean, you're a, a hardworking, you know, outside the box thinking yeah. problem solver. And if you can't do that, if you're the type of person that always has to have someone telling you what to do all the time and is never like you kind of get stuck in that indecision, want to want to make my plan perfect before I ever execute yeah. Um, and I can't do anything unless someone is sitting there directing me at how to do it first, then like, no, no shame at all. Entrepreneurship, probably not your bag. There's a allure, like a sec, like a sexiness to being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, that draws a lot of folks mm -hmm. that, and I, and I love seeing those people succeed that never thought that this was something that they could do, mm -hmm. right? But they made it happen. But it's hard. It's, it's easier hard. to be an employee than it is to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. I don't think it's the other way around. People think it's harder for you to work for somebody than it is for your work for yourself. Like you don't give 80 hours a week to your job. You will right. give 80 hours a week consistently, probably for a year to your business. I got a puppy, right? When we, before, before we were even engaged and uh, I was working so hard on my business that, um, that I was getting up. I was, I was up and in my office by four o'clock every morning, my, my four o'clock every morning, right? And so now that's when the dog still wakes up because I did it for so long when he was a puppy that yeah. he just thinks like, well, this is the wake up time. Wow. Right? <laughs> um, and now I don't have to do that so much anymore, but like, that's, I mean, it was, it was all the time laying in at, at bed at night, right? On, still on the phone, kind of, you're yeah. glued to your phone, you're glued to your Apple watch, that kind of thing. It's you can't uh, sleep and you're just putting in notes on your phone for your right. things tomorrow at bedtime. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. You know, I love the, oh, well, you can kind of build it from nothing. I don't necessarily believe that because yeah. you can't like just build it from nothing. You've got to have, got to have at least a little money and you have to have a lot planned. 
Yeah. Right. Kind of- You've got to like, you can't build it with no plan, no heart, no drive, no ambition. You can't build anything that way. Right. Yeah. But even if you are able to sort of bootstrap it, um, then you can't, you can't even do that without something here. Like That's whatever, true. trust me, you're bringing something with you and you're, you're giving something up in order to do that. It's not from nothing. Yeah. You know, um, there, there's sacrifice and there's hard work and yeah. And there is like planning and humbling yourself because you're going to think that you're way up here one bad month. And then, you know, now you're like, I, Hey, I need a, I need a couple hundred bucks just to kind of get through, you know, that sort of thing. Like I've seen it happen all the time. Right? How did you learn to start your credit repair business? Like how did you know what to do and what to do next? Like, how did you get direction guidance? How did you learn to get this done? I will be very perfectly honest and say that Google and YouTube are free, honestly, right? And so while it's not going to dig down into like the the deep, deep parts of like the consumer laws, it, you can get a really solid base of um, basic understanding um, just from free resources. Yeah. Right, just from free resources. Like it'll, it'll get you kind of started, get you going. Then obviously after that, like I've taken several mentorship courses, right? Um, I've taken several multi-hundred, multi-thousand dollar cor- as, as I was going, right? It's a business yeah. investment. Um, and that's one of the things that I think that people also stop doing is they, they stop once they hit any sort of level of success. And it's always going to be right around that, like somewhere between like 50, 60 and like a hundred client mark. Because if you start pulling in, you know, 10 grand a month, you're making over six figures a year. Like you think you freaking made it. Yeah. I like, you think you made it, you know? Um, and like, like I processed, you know, 50 clients today. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, and, but you get to that point, you start you, like, so, because here's the thing is like, now you're comfortable, mm-hmm. right? You start thinking about like, man, I could get a bigger apartment, mm-hmm. right? Um, I, you start eyeballing that, uh, that truck you wanted or, or whatever, right? And you, you kind of start because at, you know, at, at five or six, maybe $7,000 a month, I mean, almost guaranteed your lifestyle is better than it was before. Yeah. Right. For, for 99% of the people in America right now, yeah. $6,000 a month is it, like, it's, it's way more, is more than they're making. Right. So yeah. you're working from home. It's in your spare time. And that's the point where people, once they stop, once they're no longer uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right. Uh, they, the motivation that they put into it in the beginning starts to go away like this. And so they stop learning. They stop doing that. I think one of the keys to my success is I just didn't do that. Right. I always want to know more. Yeah. Right. Um, I always want to learn, well, how can I, um, how can I do this better? Right. Um, I want to know different techniques. I like if someone puts out a course, I buy it. Mm-hmm. Right. I want to, I want to see, I want to see what other, what other people, um, that are successful in the industry are doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it's not a, I'm not, I'm not proud right now. There's, there've been some times that I've gotten something. I'm like, man, this dude's full of crap. Right. After I, after I read it, I'm like, yeah. you ain't, you ain't try, you don't know nothing. Yeah. Uh, or you don't know, or even though you have this paid, you're not trying to put any information in it, right? Yeah. You're still trying to gatekeep. But if it's something out there and I respect you as a person, like I could, you know, and I've, I, I'm kind of familiar with who you are or, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm going to buy your stuff, right? I continue to learn, you know? So it was, I had to start on my own, right? Back in 2010, I had like a, like a 380 credit score. It was so bad. It was like, so t- still to this day, whenever we're doing like a consultation or whatever, I don't, I can't, I can't honestly recall anyone that has ever had a lower credit score yeah. than what I started with. Right. And so I had to learn from scratch. I had, you know, back then, like when I was younger, I was a bartender. So I always had cash. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I had a lot of income, like credit cards coming in and stuff like that. And a lot of times, you could be ignorant about credit and finances, but you you don't necessarily see it on the outside because you always have cash coming in. Yeah. And that's kind of where I was. And so I started getting turned down for apartments and turned down for cars and, and stuff like that. Um, then it was just, I had to start learning kind of on my own, right? And to this day, I'll be doing a consultation and people are embarrassed to show me, oh, I, I don't want you to see my credit score. It's like a 575. Like, oh, like, man, like, I remember how proud I was to claw my way up to a 575. Yeah. But like the information is there if people want to, people want to invest. And I, now that, that said, like even just two and a half years ago, the information that's out there on like YouTube and Google and things like that is vastly different than it was two and a half years ago. Right. Yeah. Cause now you got a bunch of BS on social media. Right. And 
maybe I didn't necessarily recognize as as you know well two and a half years ago as I do now. Um, but for the most part, I got more solid information back then than what's out there now. That's tricky, right? How do you know? Like when you don't know what you right. don't know, how do you know that the information you're getting from this guy on YouTube versus that girl, which one is right, which one is wrong? Are they both right? Like you don't know what you don't know, right? I think that, right. that goes back to having that community of like-minded people, right? right who right. are in there. And it's like for our listeners, like if you don't know, Dustin actually has a Facebook group called mm-hmm. Blast Off Compliance, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, look it up. That's a good community for you to be a part of if you want to be around other like-minded people. And there's all kinds of people in there. There are people making eight figures and there are people making eight dollars, right, right? In that group. So you can f- find yourself in between and learn and grow with people in there. And it's so important because that's the only way you can really know. How do right. you how do you yeah. know if the information is accurate or not? You gotta have that was, about it. And a lot of it I think is just again, it's kind of being just being humble enough to being willing to put yourself in a situation that you're around other people that know more than you and then just shutting up. Yeah. Right? If just shut up and listen, you know, Hey, um, I think, so my first, my first real mentor was Ebony Dubois, who's still, um, who's still one of my, my greatest friends. I love her to death. And she has forgotten more about credit repair than most people will ever know. Right. And I learned so much because I was willing to pay. Um, I think I was paying 50 bucks. It wasn't, nothing like $50 a month mm-hmm. or um, for uh, a Facebook group that she was doing. Like, and it was, she would go live every week and I would just sit there and shut up and listen because if you put yourself around enough great people and you shut up and listen, then their conversation will become your conversation. It will yeah. like become imprinted on your heart. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you'll be having these same conversations at like, like you came up with the knowledge, right? Like, right. you know, um, so that was a big deal for me is just being able to put myself in a situation where I'm just going to be here and and shut up. Sponge, I, right? Just soak right. it. I'm it. willing to pay the, I mean, it wasn't anything, $50 a month or something, you know? Um, and like, I was so fortunate to come across her four months into my journey. Like, I think I had 45 clients, right? I, so maybe it was two months, mm-hmm. right? But I joined the group um, and I don't know that she even knew that I was really there for like two and a half months. Cause I just, I just logged in and listened. Right. And she went over just the real life credit repair stuff. Like, Hey, you're making workflows, you're making SOPs. Uh, we're talking about, we're talking about, you know, customer service. Cause you know, our, all clients are the same. They're all gonna have the same issues, you know? Yeah. So how do you, you know, proactively address some of these situations, mm-hmm. you know, so you can look like the client whisperer and answer their questions before they even know to ask it. Yeah. Right? How do you preemptively do some of this stuff? And that kind of, opened me up to like, you know, there's, there's larger mentors out there that are people that have been doing this for, you know, for years and years. And if you are humble enough to just sometimes just ask for help, not, and here's the, and I do this too. Like, I don't like people that want the answer given to them. Mm -hmm. So when I'm answering you, like, I'm going to try to find, I'm going to try to help you figure out what the answer is. Like, like here's where, you know, we can go to look for this. This where you, people don't want that. They just want to, Oh, just, you know, tell one where it's and, fed and, and do right. It. <laughs> and, and I'm not a big fan of that, but I've never been like that. Right. I just want to, I will listen to you. And then based on what you say, I'm going to go and I will go and find it out. Mm-hmm. That's good. What yeah. do you know now? Right. Like two and a half years in million dollars later, what do you know now that you wish you knew then? Like if you could look back, Dustin, make sure, like what would be the one thing that you you wish you would have known that that you know now. <laughs> your first big purchase needs to be automations. I mean, a one. Your first big purchase purchase needs to be automations. You need to hire staff a lot faster than you want to, mm-hmm. right? And for a lot of folks, that is, I, I hired my first person at a hundred and some odd clients. I was working hard, and I just hired someone to help with printing and mailing, right? And like once you actually start growing a staff, you start figuring out how much more money you can actually make because yeah. you don't want to, you know, if you're, if you're making 10 or $12,000 a month, like, like mine, you want to keep know, it all. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and you don't want to pay someone, you know, 2,500 or $3,000 a month. But I'm telling you, if you hire the right person, put them in that $3,000 a month role, um, help them manage some of this stuff. Um, it will free up so many hours of your time to go do more money making activities, right? So whatever you were doing to get these clients, Right now, you can go do more of that, bring in more clients, mm-hmm. and and you will you will make more money faster after you start hiring staff than you ever did before you started hiring staff. And everyone everyone does that wrong, and I did it wrong. Right, um, I held on and held on and held on till like 
like like I had brown hair when I started, you know, that, like that's how like it was. And here's the truth: it's like my blood pressure was getting bad, right? Um, it was I was anxious all the time because I never had a moment to not think about work. Yeah, right. It was always you know okay, like a like a constant checklist in my head of things that I need to get done. Like the moment you start hiring staff is the moment you start going from like a hustler to a business owner. Yep. And right. it's that thing like you have um you have more time, right? To be CEO yeah. of your company. Right. And you realize that it takes money to make money. Yeah. And it's hard for you to go from, you know, twelve K to let's say back down to nine K, but it allows you to go up to twenty K. Because you're right. limited, you're gonna eventually plateau. You can only do so yeah. much on your own. Do you really want to wait till you get to that point? Because then your business hits a standstill, and, and you're now you're really screwed. And at that point, you don't even have time to train them. Like now, if you if you wait till that point, then uh, you can't even you don't even have the time to carve out to train your people that, yeah. that you hired on. So they can't be great, and they can't help you be great because you're so busy in continuing to do all the things you've always done. You can't now show them how to take some of those things off your plate. Yeah. What would you then, if you're giving yourself the advice? Back to when you started, when would you have wished you would have hired or automated or outsourced? What would you, when do you wish you would have done that? What point in the business? So, um, and you get, you hit 20 clients without any automations and, and you can start to sweat, mm -hmm. right? Um, and depending on how you want to do your communication with your clients, like back in the day, like mine was all on my cell phone, mm -hmm. right? Um, it was here, oh boy, there. <laughs> yeah, it's sure. Uh, yeah, now don't nobody have my cell phone. Uh, <laughs> And, and I honestly hate my phone, right? Like, and so here's honestly, if I if I could sum it all up, I would tell you that you need to plan like you're already a business owner, mm -hmm. right? What would it look like then? Because you implement things and you tolerate things and you accept things in the beginning of your business that you would never accept at 750 clients, yeah, ever, ever, ever. You also put processes in place that. Um, that you create based on your abilities and your time mm -hmm. that w is finite, yeah. right? And so the, the, the more you plan like you don't have any staff, the more you plan and create like you don't have any staff, the harder it's going to be for you to do staff. So you need to add as much as possible, always be thinking about what will this look like mm -hmm. by whatever I'm implementing right now, whether it's automations, active campaign, uh, Twilio, whatever it is that you're doing, um, what is this going to look like if I add another 50 clients or I add another 100 clients or I have to um, hire staff? Because if you're not thinking about that, then you're always playing catch up. Yeah, always. That's always I saw the forward. same thing too. Um, I work with a few people on a one on one coaching, and majority of them, they come to me because they don't know how to build, right? So, man, I want to, you know, I, I know what I'm doing is good, but I can't scale. I don't know how to build my business. And when I tell them that they have to build their business for tomorrow, they look at me like I have seven heads. And it's like, well, I don't need all that. Like, you're right, you don't. But what you're doing right now, like the process, the place, the systems that you have in place now that work for 10 clients will not no. always work for 500. However, oh, no. if you have a process in place that works for 500, guess what? It will also work for 10. Yeah. Building a business is hard. Building a business again every six months is insanity. It's even harder. So every time you grow and you and you experience growth and you scale, you have to change the way you do things. That's stupid. Like just build the business that you want for. So I ask, well, how many clients? What's the like? If you can snap your fingers right now, I have this number of clients. How many do you want? And he say, a hundred. I'm like, you're dreaming small. How many do you want? A thousand. Okay, great. A thousand. Then yeah, we're gonna build the foundation for your business right now as if you had a thousand clients, because right. now it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you have a thousand clients, you don't ever have to rebuild or restructure how you do things because you're already doing them that way now, right? right. Um, I had a guy ask a question to my group um, and he kind of sort of, I don't want to say he sort of did it in like a, yeah, um, it was not necessarily what I would think was like a, it's like a general question type thing. Like he was like, hey, does anyone have like a proven system to get, you know, a hundred new clients a month, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and basically what it came down to is I asked him like, Hey, you know, that's all sounds well and good, right? you you just started your company. You want to start doing a hundred. And he had talked about how much money he'd invested, $15,000, mm -hmm. whatever in 
putting all these systems and stuff in place. And in my mind, I'm like, so yeah, you 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 invested fifteen thousand dollars in it backwards, and, brother. <laughs> yeah, you didn't never you didn't never want to take a class about lead generation, you know, marketing, <laughs> nothing like that. Like, how did you what did you how did you think they were going to just fall out of the trees, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you you could have got you know uh, yeah. spent five hundred of that and gone and got a you know kind of cheap social media course. Yeah. Um, but the thing I said is like you know like. You're thinking wrong because if you're thinking, well, how do I get a hundred clients? Uh, like, there's other things that you need to put in place. Mm -hmm. um, what is your what's your communication protocol going to be like? Do you have your active education campaign set up? Um, because trust me, you're not going to be the one be the one actually touching all of those clients two or three times right. a month, kind of giving them updates and letting them know what's going on. You know, so you're going to need salespeople to on that. Do you have a sales script set up? Do you have sales training set up? Um, do you have all these things set up? Because if not, you can't handle hundred clients a month. And and I intentionally grew a lot slower than a lot of other people that that I'm friends with because I was able to see, like I was able to see people go from 20 clients, like hop on TikTok and within like three months hit 300 clients, but they're not in business anymore or they're working for someone else, right? Mm -hmm. Because they could not handle, um, they, you know, you, the the kind of slower, more consistent growth where you can sort of turn it on and and take it off and heat it back up and kind of go back. It allows you to find the, yeah. uh, it allows you to find all the, uh, yeah, all your mistakes and things like that. And you could be like, okay, let's identify the problems because if this is a problem now, right, it's kind of like a nuisance. If I had another four hundred clients, like this is going to be a huge thing. <laughs> I know. This this one little nuisance problem is going to be a huge thing. So I grew slower than I probably could have, but I always paid attention, always tweaking, always changing, like, you know, shifting processes and things like that, because I wanted to be as efficient as possible. Like the goal as you're growing, everyone, you should probably hear this. Like when you are creating your systems, the goal is to make them so streamlined and so efficient that no matter how many clients you grow, you grow to, all you have to do is drop another person in to take a role and, and train them in that role. Like yeah. that, that's the goal. Right. Yeah, um, machine. Get, right. Right. That's machine. Like create your processes to be so streamlined, so efficient and so repeatable that um, no matter who you drop in there, if you get to the point where you have to add another staff person, you just drop the staff person in. Um, hopefully before you absolutely have to, you train them and then they can just continue on with the process and everything runs like it should. Right. Um, and when you don't do that, when you're not constantly trying to identify, like I call it top grading. Right, because we're great. Can we get better? This is a, a small problem for you've got 500 clients. 40 of these clients is the problem. Right. Yeah. If you scale up to a thousand clients, now you've got 80 clients banging on your your uh, email and, and yeah. blowing up your phone two or three times a week because you didn't handle it then. That's true. It's not as cookie cutter as people make it seem to get into the industry. Right. Like no, all these ads everywhere. And all you need is a cell phone and a laptop. And a million dollars is brightly waiting in your future at the end of the tunnel, right? Well, it doesn't really work that way, right? It's true. But man, the path that you got to walk on to get there, the blood, sweat, and tears, that's left out. Right. That's left out of, of those messages. And it's it's important because nobody likes nobody likes a bait and switch, right? Nobody no. wants to be told something, no. think, it, you know, or, you know, if somebody recommends like a really good restaurant, and I go there and the food sucks, I get mad at that person. I'm like, yeah. Right. But they love the food. It's not their fault. But like, I still blame them. Right. I still blame them. Right. So yeah. there's a lot. I did of the same thing with movies. If I get yeah. a movie because yeah. you said it was great and it blows, <laughs> oh, and I mean, you got issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't trust you no more. Exactly. Uh, but, exactly. But there is a lot of that. And there's a lot of that in the way people do courses and stuff like that, too. Like, um, and I'm, I'm not. And this is this is just me, right? So this is not a knock on anyone or anything. In this industry, what you have is a lot of like lifestyle marketing. You know, a lot of it is directed towards uh, people and cultures that classically didn't have a lot. Yeah. Right. Um. And and I'm not a big fan of that. I don't think that I, I certainly don't think that you should you should prey on other people's insecurities and their desires for better things in order to enrich yourself. Like if you're if you're truly like giving back to the community. And, and all of that, that's one thing, but there's a lot of lifestyle marketing that's, Hey, you know, buy my course and you can get my castle. Right. And like, it's not even that, right? Like that. that, that's true. But here's, here's what bugs me even more. The people who are out there teaching others how to run a credit repair business, never had a successful credit repair business of their own. 
right? And you can find courses online for anywhere from $47 to $10,000 or more teaching you how to run a credit repair company. I'm not saying the information is bad, but what I'm saying is, who are you learning from, right? Are you learning from someone who day in and day out runs still a successful credit repair business? Or are you learning from someone who tried to run a credit repair business, failed, and now are trying to teach others how to run their own? Or someone who never even had a credit repair business? Well, they, yeah. well, they, they pivoted into automations and ads. Yeah. Right? Like, so, you know, yeah. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot of, uh, or they pivoted from personal credit repair into, uh, we'll start doing business credit. Yeah. All right. Uh, and it's, you know, they can't find a niche, but they're not, they can't find their niche because they don't, they don't pour themselves really into any one thing, right? So they don't give themselves time to learn it, to um, really, really kind of take it in and internalize it and become great at it. Yeah. And they want to just switch to, from one thing. What are your credentials? What are your credentials to teach? Because if I'm going to go to the, to the doc, to the, to the hospital and I need to have surgery, what is your experience? Right. right. Do, do I see the degrees in your wall? Like, do I know you're even really a doctor? Like, right. Like you, what are your credentials for me to trust that you're going to do the surgery successfully? And I'm not going to die. Right. What are your credentials that I'm going to invest this money and I'm really going to learn how to get my business up and running and be successful? What are your credentials that prove to me that I can trust you in doing that? Right. right. So that's the major thing. I think there's a lot, the whole reason why I wanted to start this podcast in the first place is because I want to make sure if anybody's even thinking about getting into the credit repair industry, that they know all the bad and ugly stuff about right. it before yeah. they get in. And not only the good, shiny, happy feelings, unicorns, and rainbows about it, because you got to make an informed decision. It is not easy. You have to know right. the good, the bad, and the ugly in order to know what you're getting yourself into because you don't want to feel like you're to blame. Well, I think that one of the things that you talked about earlier is that that Kind of being a part of a community that um, is going to be edifying and is going to try to uh, knock out any BS or anything like that, because there are, um, and this is one of the things that I've had to learn is that there are a bunch of like, I use the term vultures. I don't mean it in the way that it sounds, but there's a lot of people that like circle around mm-hmm. um, like p- the periphery of the credit repair industry and kind of prey on new CROs coming in, right? Yeah. Someone I started having uh, like, like, you know, influencers and things like that when i started when when daniel started saying oh hey you know dustin made you know dustin you know this put me in a commercial this is dustin he did you know join the the what is it the the challenge thing and mm-hmm. you can be like dustin who did a hundred thousand dollars in his first um in his first x out right um hit hit a hundred clients in this many months and, and so now he's bringing in eleven thousand dollars a month blah 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 wow. immediately I, I had people start like blowing up my dms like mm-hmm. i've heard of you right i kind of know who you are but um, now you want $3,500 of my money and you want $4,500 of my money. And uh, then there's other people that just kind of provide uh, like a credit repair sort of service, like a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, something that you may want to add to your business. Here's an additional income stream, blah, 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 blah. And there's a lot of folks that, that here's the, what I figured out about sales is that all you really need to know about sales is 10% more than the person you're talking to. Because right? if you know 10% more than the person you're talking to, then you can maybe tell them some things that they don't know. And all of a sudden they think you know something, right? Mm-hmm. And and I've seen a lot of people get sucked into some of those companies, people that surround credit repair, the credit repair industry and prey on those people that, you know, and it turned out to like the the product is just crap. Yeah. I, and the uh, secret to marketing is it's very easy. It's very simple. And it shouldn't be a secret at all. You give away more than you expect to take back. Right. Because it's a law of attraction, right? Like, I want my free stuff to be better than other people's paid stuff. Right. And that's the secret to marketing. That's why you do so well. Because you put so much free videos, free content, free education out there that mm-hmm. now you're able to stand here and and have the success that you have. Because you're not afraid to give. So another... um an, a very similar to that, right? Someone who uh, also is social media, you know, my buddy Ricardo, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Ricardo Soto, he's got the financial ER out in California. Um, he's a he's a millionaire plaque winner. Um, got a huge, a huge credit repair company out there doing very, very well. Also doesn't run ads. Like he built his company, right? Um, he was one of my, he was one of the first of the of the astronauts in the Blastoff group. And back when I had my little $300 course, he took that and, and he got on TikTok. And the way he, the way he markets is, he does social media, but he just goes live Monday through Friday, every day for about an hour, just mm-hmm. talking about credit, um, giving people free advice and that kind of stuff. And I think he's got 2000 clients or something like that. He stays yeah. right around there. 
And it's just because he's, he literally, his day is, his day is around getting out free information. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, right? right. Like, oh, I'm going to go live and there's going to be no one watching. Who cares? Yeah. Like, cares. you know what, you know, what's the cool thing about YouTube and Facebook and social media, like when you go live, it's that it's going to live forever. Like yeah. nobody may have watched it live, but it's on your page. It's on right. your YouTube channel. Eventually people are going to start watching. So who cares? Watch you know, and then maybe next week you got 10 people the following week. You know, you don't go live and have 5,000 people join your live the first time, right? right? And it's not embarrassing. You're doing no, yourself you're and the people who are going to watch this a favor by putting this content out there, yeah. right? What's the difference between you putting the content out live and you putting the content out pre-recorded? But other than if you're live, there may actually come one person that you're able to give value to in real time. Just kind of like the inverse that you said, like it's everything, every time that you do that, it's an investment. Every time you make a piece of content, because especially now, it's very different social media wise than it was even just a year ago, year and a half ago. You used to be able to hit, you know, 100,000 views, 200,000 views with, you know, one good video. Yeah. Well, now a lot of these algorithms have changed and um, you don't get these huge hits anymore. What happens is, is just views compile over time. Mm -hmm. And and I, I get people signing up every day, like without, without a consultation. Without, um, just by going through the funnel, no consultation, no anything, I get probably 10 or 15 people a week signing up just based off how, like seeing old content that I put out. It's evergreen. That came up, right. That came up in their feed and they're like, oh yeah, like this, I, yeah, I want to work with this guy. People get so addicted to like the immediate views because you used to be like that. Like TikTok was so, man, it was addictive for some of these cats, right? They, you know, get addicted to the hundred thousand views, you know, million views and stuff like that. And so when the algorithm started to change and the instant views or the, you know, you know, a hundred thousand views in four days where that wasn't hit anymore, they just didn't know what to do. Yeah. Right. But the reality is, is that now you can sort of drip content out where you used to have to put out content every day, twice a day, that kind of stuff. Now you can, now you can drip content out and TikTok or YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, it's like slow rolling it out and increasing the audience sort of over time. So now instead of like, one video you have that might hit a million views. Well, now you may have 20 videos that over the next, you know, week or a month or a month and a half are going to hit, you know, 50,000 views each, right? But mm -hmm. much slower, but your like the wave, the ripple effect that it has mm -hmm. brings in a lot more clients than it used to. And, you know, I mean, it's, there's, there's all kinds of ways to do it, but, but it's, it's out there and they're ready there. You just got to be willing to give it out. It drives me crazy when the biggest problem in the credit repair industry, the biggest problem that CROs have is leads. Yeah. It's the biggest problem, right? I, and it blows my mind still like, man, we do so much shout out help. But the problem is there's no action. Let me tell you this, right? The biggest mistake that I made in my business mm -hmm. is not embracing um, social media, short form video, so like that much earlier. Oh man, like I, I could be, I could have made a million dollars in, you know, instead of two and a half years. Yeah. Like I could have done it in seven months if I knew then what I knew now. Yeah. Right. Get a funnel, have, have a, have a good, good funnel built for you that can bring people into a, into a client experience, like a customer experience. Yep. And, you know, because that's going to be a huge game changer. A funnel, it, like I was like, oh, I don't want a funnel. I just want a website. Stupid. Mm -hmm. Stupid mistake. Good for nothing. Um, yeah, yeah. Stupid mistake. And don't be afraid to do the things that you don't think that you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like short form video, things like that. Because uh, most of the time, the result you want is on the other end of the work that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. right? Like that's what you want. Like the the success that you're really hoping for is on the other side of what of the work that you are um, intimidated by. That was a, a huge deal for me, like changing that, but. Yeah. I, I hear this uh, uh, at my church a lot where the pastor say, if you want to live a life like no one else, you have to be willing to do the things that no one else is willing to do. Right. Right. Like if you want to live a life that's different from your friends and from your family that you were brought up in and your circle of influence, you have to be willing to do things differently right. or else you're never going to get there. You know, right. I know we gave tons of advice out in this, in this call, but if you had to give somebody one piece of advice who's thinking about getting into the industry, what would you tell them? Done is better than perfect. <laughs> right? Um, like execution will always beat analysis, period, point blank. 
consistent, imperfect action, right, will get you where you want to go faster than than hitting the lottery. That's true, right? Um, and and that's really it. Like it's so easy to um, it's so easy to to compare yourself to this other person's growth or that other person's growth. Like, are you doing everything you can? Right? If you're doing everything you can. Um, then, then you're going to do just fine. If you can put in that, if you can put in the action consistently and you, you stay humble, right? Continue learning, then you're going to be successful, right? Um, there's, there's different ways to, I don't want to say there's different ways like skin and cap. There's different ways to, to do all kinds of things, right? Yeah. Like you don't have to have your face on videos and stuff like that. I did like, so I can, I'll show you this. Like I do stuff like this, right? I made this on Canva, right? And I will create a video. Like and and every time I post a video like this, mm-hmm. um, over the next month it'll get 150 thousand views and I'll get 100 signups for it. I'm not I'm not on video, right? Um, and just to test it, I I did it on a brand new channel with no other video, so it's not like the following that I all, all already had. Yeah. Um, and all that is is like, hey, the top six things that I that you can ask a collection agency for when requesting validation, mm-hmm. right? Um, original purchase agreement, you know, all. So you, and you made that on Canva, like the handwriting Canva. stuff. Is I, used, Canva. I used, the font is architect's daughter. <laughs> I got it on Canva. I printed it out on a, on a, I, I took a piece of yellow pad off, ran it through my printer. Imperfect action, brother. Right. And it goes out perfect. <laughs> That's it. You know, and so you can like, you want to, you want to get on TikTok, but you don't want to show your face. Great. Right. Do something like, you know, do something like this. Yeah. Put and the down with a pen and just go through right. it and, and just go through it. You're just talking to it, talking it out. Proof of chain of ownership of the alleged debt and include proof of assignment for each change of ownership. Right. Explain kind of what that means. Right. And, and I'm telling you like, I'll, so I'll do this video and it'll, it'll get a hundred thousand views. Right. Um, I'll get a hundred signups for it. Yeah. You know, um, it's so just do it. Your advice is whatever it. it is, just do it. Is there something that you could do that you haven't done yet? Just do it. What's the worst that can happen? You'll be in the same situation that you are now. You're not going to die. Right. The worst that can happen is nothing, which is pretty right. bad if nothing yeah. happens, but that's the worst. And again, like I, so I've got a, before we go, like I, I've got a friend named Jonathan, um, you know, I'm talking about Jonathan, uh, who runs Sherpa Credit up in New York. Mm-hmm. I was trying to kind of coach him through TikTok. And let me tell you, like when he started putting out TikToks, like in videos, uh, social media stuff, it was the worst, homeliest, like, like God, all, like back, I mean, and it reminded me of like my first videos, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm looking back at them now, like zero production value, horrible lighting, you know, and zero views. He would go live, zero views, nothing, right? You look back at his TikTok or social media, like his first 50 videos, like have less than a hundred views. Yeah. Right? 50 videos, less than a hundred views. He was doing like four or five a week, yeah, right? Um, sometimes two or three a day. Yeah. And um, over time, he was able to, he was able to tweak it, change it. Let, let's change lighting. I, you know, why don't my videos look like some of these other videos out there? Oh, well, lighting is different. Oh, well, you know what? I could, I can get this little, um, I can get this little twenty dollar mic that I can hook yeah. right into my phone and improve my audio, right? Oh, well, CapCut's a free tool. I can kind of, you know, there's, a, I can watch a YouTube on how to use CapCut and yeah. start adding captions and stuff like that. Like over time, he just consistently did, and, and I don't know anyone besides him that put out 50 videos that got no views yeah. and stuck with it. Um, but now his videos are some of the, some like some of the cleanest, best content, best best content packaging, right? Um, he puts out real information yeah. and um, and over time, like the leads started to come in, the consultations started to come in and he was able to build his company that, that way. But like he is a, he's one of those people that was just like, listen, this is the path I've chosen. Even if it's not working right now, I can get better at this. I yeah. know this is a proven medium mm-hmm. because I, like my buddy Dustin does it. I know Ricardo does it. Like I see all these other people doing it. I know this medium works. It's not working I get it for to me, right? Me. Right. It's not working for me right now. How do I make that work? Last piece of advice, guys, whatever you do, man, surround yourself with good people, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I'm talking like at home and on the internet it, and in the communities that you get involved in um, inside the industry, inside your your oikos, right? Your sphere. Surround yourself with good people and be a good person, right? Be a good person, get surrounded by good people, pour into others and be humble enough to let others pour into you. When you when you learn something, pass it on, right? Be, don't be, don't just be a taker, right? Mm-hmm. Don't just be a taker because if you allow yourself to, to give out to the people that you had to learn it somewhere, right? Give it to someone else when they're asking questions. Yep. The universe will just sort of align itself. 
around because if you're a good person trying to help other good people do good things, then good things will sort of just come your way, right? Like you will be, you will have the help there when you need it, mm-hmm. right? Um, and you'll be able to, you'll find yourself in circles where you can ask questions that are going to help you along. Um, you will develop friendships with people that you trust that can give you perspective. So even if you think you got the best idea, you know, like, trust me, like, I, I think I've got a whole lot of, I, a whole lot of great ideas um, that don't survive the lie today. That's so true. And then like, yeah. I'll call you out on it. It's like, yeah. really? Like, that's, that's, a whole, that's the worst thing yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> you have to have people around you that are willing to be like, okay, let's think about this. Let's think about how this is actually going to work in real life. Because yeah. just because it, like, no one lies to me more than I lie to be. Right. Um, I will lie to me and, and I will think things are a great idea when they're ultimately later on. I'm like, man, that was a bad idea. Yeah. You know? um, but if you if you don't have people around that you can that you can kind of share those things with and bounce ideas off of, then there's no one to be honest with you and tell you that it's a bad idea. There's no one to be honest with you that will give you perspective um, and say, hey, you know, uh, this is why this is probably not going to work for you, man. Like, let's think about it this way um, or go ahead and try it. But be on the lookout for this. Mm-hmm. Because this is going to kind of signal that this is not going to go good for you. Goes That's back to having that tribe, right? Having that tribe. Yeah. When it's important, be surrounded. Yeah. Don't be so damn competitive. Don't be competing with everybody. Right? No one got, yeah, yeah, no one's out here trying to take your lunch money. Yeah. Right? You don't got to gatekeep all everything. <laughs> like, help folks out. And, like, the more you help others out, trust me, the more people will help you out. Yeah. People are free to give yeah. because they feel yeah. like they won't have any left. And it's like, no, like, you give and, and freeze up room in your cup. Exactly. Exactly. You got it. Right. Well, the down. Pour it out. It's gonna. It now you've got some room where someone else can give you something that you didn't have or that you desperately need. Times too. It's not learning something new. It's being reminded of things that you already know. Yes. <laughs> right. Yep. Like yep. learning all this new information is great, but you got to apply it. And in order right. for you to apply, you got to be reminded of the things that you already know. That's where that community comes in. Like you see somebody mention something you already know, but you forgot. Like yep. oh, yeah, I, I should be doing that. And then right. that can be the, the game changer for your business. And I'm not saying like, man, spend all your time, you know, online or in groups or anything like that. You know, if you've got questions, right, kind of kind of look around and find someone that looks like they're trusted, that mm-hmm. doesn't seem so scammy. Like if something seems too good to be true, that shit probably is. Trust you, got it. It's not, yeah. Find the humble people that are willing to, they're willing to help out, that aren't asking you to buy different, you know, all, the, all, all everything. Everyone's got all this kind of stuff that you can buy. Um, you don't got to do that. Like if the right community will answer your question, in most of the time, yeah. right? So um, be wary because there are a lot of folks out there, but um, but don't let it make it make you cynical and non-trusting because you will miss out on a lot of great relationships. Um, there were like, there were seven credit repair people that came to my wedding, uh-huh. I came, to my, came to my wedding. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that yeah. those are, um, those are friendships that, that, you know, you miss, that, yeah, that you miss out on if you're just always taken. Great advice. Man, this was awesome. Great, great conversation. Um, yeah, man. I know that it's going to be a lot of uh, valuable information for whoever is watching or listening. Just do yourself a favor. Don't stop, right? Keep going right. Yeah. and surround yourself with the right uh, community, with the right like-minded people to push you when you need to push and just do it, right? Like Nike, yeah. just do it. Just continue doing the things like if, if someone has the formula, like if this is the formula, you've seen all these other people be successful, like trust me, you can do this, Yeah. right? Um, you, have to, you have to put in the work. Right. Um, it's not it's not like baking cookies where you can follow an exact recipe like you got to put in the work, you know, but whatever it is, success is waiting on the other side of that. Like if you will just put in the work. Right? I've never known anyone to bust their ass for months and months and years and years and not come out successful because the willingness to put in that kind of work, it changes you. It tra- it 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 transitions to other parts in your life. So now you're willing to put in the work in other parts of your life as well. Yeah, it changes. Right. Um, it makes it you better. Right. It'll change your relationships. It'll change your health. I mean, it'll just change your mindset. Yeah. When an obstacle comes or a problem comes, well, you already know that you can, like your stress level is a lot lower because you've already figured out all these other obstacles, yeah. right? So now your belief in your obstacle um, avoidance system, mm-hmm. right, is a lot better than it was before, you know, before sure. you learned how to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just like so, you've never seen somebody who really gave it their war, worked hard, not succeed, I've also never seen someone accidentally trip and fall on a million dollars. That does not happen. Even a person who the lottery, it wasn't their first lottery ticket. Right. Anyone that can, you know, uh, like build a business that makes a million dollars, like you did that. Mm-hmm. Right. You did, and, and I mean, 
No one can take that away from you. Anyone like, that builds you, a business that makes six figures. Right. You right. did that. That yeah. made any stuff. I'm like, like, you did that. It was your effort and your work. Yeah. There's always a new step, right? Like you can always get like, are you satisfied with where you are? You yeah. always want well, I mean, more. And, you know, it's like, we just always naturally want more. And I like, I like those folks that are like, hey, you know what? I'm good at with my hundred clients. I keep it about a hundred clients. I make, you know, I bring home, you know, $10,000 a month and, and okay, great. You know, most folks aren't like that. But no, I don't know anyone that just accidentally became successful. Right? You might have accidentally stumbled into into credit repair or into entrepreneurship, kind of like I did. Right? You get a violent shove into entrepreneurship, yeah. but like every moment after that was that was a plan. It was hard work. It yeah, it was there was effort there. Right? Mm-hmm. I didn't continue just to fall and you know find myself with a six or seven figure bank account. Like that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me and have this awesome conversation. What's next? What's your next goal for you right now? Because when you hit that goal, we'll bring you back and we'll talk about that journey. We've talked about this several times. Like I've got the software coming out that I that I think is going to revolutionize what what we believe like the floor of a credit repair software is. Yep. Right. Um, because right now there's a lot of softwares out there that um, you know, what we we would consider maybe 35 or 40 percent. Right. That's what it does. It's 35 or 40 percent of your job. And none of them, none of these softwares are done by people that actually work in this industry. And so I've been able to work with a lot of uh, work with and get counsel from a lot of very, very large credit repair companies um, that, that I trust. And I've been able to talk to a lot. And, you know, it was only two and a half years ago for me. So I still remember what it was like as a, you know, like a youngling credit repair company coming just coming in and um, I'm, the software that's coming out is going to be one of those types of things that no matter who you are on that spectrum, um, it's going to be able to help out your business, right? And so that's the next big goal is to uh, is to have that out, right? And then it's going to get super busy with a bunch of support and onboarding and all those kind of things because I think that what I tried to do was create the software that everyone had hoped existed mm-hmm. for a long time and have it very seamlessly integrate all the features that we that we had hoped that our current software or the software that we used before our current software Mm -hmm. um have it have the features that all of those things um can do it's built from from basically the the brainchild of all the successful cro's i know right um everything that i thought of that i thought was a great idea like i ran it by other people that i trusted and most of the time, man, that is a great idea. I can't believe the software doesn't have that. Um, there's other times like, man, that is some BS and you're going to waste, you know, it's yeah. not going to work and this is why. And so again, being humble and trying to, trying to, okay, that's a good, you know, good point. We've kind of created something. We've got something that I think is going to be awesome. And it's going to, in terms of both customer service, in terms of how people create disputes, um, in terms of um, the, the, the peripheral relationships between CROs and outsourcers and all these kind of, and how those can communicate um, all very seamlessly into one platform um, without giving away too much. So I know because I know we'll do another yep. another talk then, but I think it's going to be awesome. It's been a year now in the making since CreditCon last year, which should tell you like how much you know how much it morphed and, and changed yeah. since then. That that um, and and you know this last year was my largest year revenue wise, and you know when you, when you make six or seven hundred thousand dollars in a year, like your perspective of what a business software needs is going to be different than when you're only making a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's very true. Very, very different. A lot of the changes, a lot of the stuff have been born out of uh, just my growth and what what has gone on in my company and changes in the industry, right? Um, there's a lot of things that are in the industry now, uh, like arbitration and things like that, that were not necessarily even a thing, uh, certainly not as popular as they are now a year ago. Yeah. And the software is going to be able to do all of that. However you like to process, however however you want to run your company, this is truly the software that works for you instead of the other way around, where you are yeah. where you are at the mercy of the way the software works. Because I've designed it to be very intuitive, but also eminently editable by the by the CRO, um, and and that's honestly more for like the veterans that are coming in that already know exactly how they want to do things, right? Yeah. Um, well, now you can do it. You can do everything you want to do. It's just easier now. Right. And so you can create like little pathways for yourself that make everything that you already were doing easier. So it's not just for the like the rookie CROs. It's going to be for the the veterans and the seasoned people that 
that have been doing this for a while, been down in the trenches, and they know what works for them, and they don't need another software telling them what to do. That's right. great. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. I know it's going to put an earthquake into the, the yeah. industry in a good way, and um, I'm excited. So when we have that out, we'll bring you back and talk about that that experience of what it's been that. like. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that one in person. Yeah. 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 We'll do that one in person. That one's going to be a, that one's going to be, that was going to be big. So, uh, man, I appreciate it. And thank you. Uh, not only, uh, uh, you guys back at home, Bruce is one of the, been one of the guys who um, I've been able to bounce questions off of. Um, he has consistently, right. Um, always given me honest answers, always taking time out of his uh, day to, to answer questions and give perspective on, on virtually anything. Right. So just like he's, helping you guys out and you guys get to see the podcast. Like he helped me out and he, just like he helps other people out too. So man, I appreciate you for, for truly wanting the best for the industry overall, because yeah. a lot of people say that, but like, you know, you'll know a tree by its fruit, right? Really, yeah. you know, um, and you could always work backwards from, you know, to find a, a person's true motivation from their actions. Because if they're saying like, oh, I want to help people, but they never take the time to help people. Right. Really, you just want to be known as a guy that likes to help people, right? You don't actually want to put in the work of helping folks. So, so I appreciate you being the other kind of guy, right? Um, willing to help without even telling people that you're you're available for help. So, um, I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm honored to, that you thought I would be someone that that your your folks could learn from. Man, take care, and and I'm, I'm sure we'll talk again next couple of weeks. All right, for sure. We'll get you back here as soon as we can. All Thanks, right, Dustin. Take care, buddy.